Richard, how the coronavirus uh, pandemic will affect the economy in Eastern Europe and uh, particularly in Bulgaria? Well, I think that we can see already that the effect is, is very big. I mean, on the one hand, the, the virus didn't spread as much in, in Central and Eastern Europe and in Bulgaria. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the number of cases, the number of deaths as well is, is much lower than in Western Europe and other parts of the world. And it's a very positive thing, of course. Mm -hmm. But the economic impact, I think, will be quite comparable because countries in Eastern Europe, including Bulgaria, introduced these quite strict lockdowns at a quite early stage of the development of the virus, you know, maybe because they were worried about the health system capacity, maybe other concerns as well. But the the restrictions, so the, you know, the closing of shops and, and restaurants and that kind of thing in Eastern Europe and Bulgaria is quite comparable with Western Europe in mm -hmm. terms of the timing and the severity. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the economic impact is going to be quite similar, maybe not quite as bad as in Western Europe, but you know, I think all countries will have a very deep recession this year. I think all countries probably already in quite a deep uh, recession. Uh, I mean, yeah? No, please. please no. Uh, in an article uh, in Economist magazine, you predict that the recession in Eastern Europe uh, will be worse than in the West, as you said now, and will be as bad as the recession following the collapse mm. of communism. Why is that? Yeah, this was very annoying because it's not what I said. So ah. they, they, they misquoted me and so they made this, this kind true. of half clarification at the end. Uh, ah, okay. I fought with him for a week about it. It's... Um, yeah, this was this was very annoying. What I said was it would be the worst since the early nineties. It would, I mean, it it would be the worst. The worst, the worst recession since mm -hmm. the early nineties, mm -hmm. but not as bad as. Okay. I mean, this is an important distinction. Yeah, I think, yeah. So. There is a difference. I mean, it will, it will be worse than two thousand eight. You know, in terms of the, the size of the recession, uh -huh. but uh, it won't be comparable to the transition recessions. You know. It's a different type of recession. It won't last as long, for sure, you know. And so uh, it, it will be the worst, the worst since then. And I think in terms of comparing it to Western Europe, I mean, I think there will be some countries where it will be worse than Western Europe. So I think, for example, countries that are very reliant on tourism, like Croatia or Montenegro, mm -hmm. those countries it will probably be worse than, than you know, Germany or Austria. Or, Whatever, but I don't think that's necessarily the case for most of Eastern Europe, and probably not for Bulgaria, for example. But but, but Bulgaria is also very dependent on the uh, uh, export uh, to Germany, so uh, we will depend on maybe how the German economy um, recovers. Yes, I think that's a very important point. So the a lot of what happens from now in Central and Eastern Europe will depend on what happens in Western Europe. And that's because, like you said, of exports, mm -hmm. because that's where most of the tourists come from, mm -hmm. because of remittance inflows, because of other types of capital inflows as well. So foreign direct investment or portfolio investment inflows. I mean, Eastern Europe is very, very integrated with Western Europe in economic terms. And, you know, like you said, maybe especially Germany. I mean, it's a bit different. So, for example, the former Yugoslav countries tend to be very integrated with Italy and countries further north are integrated with Scandinavia. But, you know, Germany is important for everybody. So I think that what happens in Germany is, is very important. And it seems, you know, Germany has been hit very hard by this, like mm -hmm. all countries. But by Western European standards, the spread of the virus in Germany is much less compared to Italy or France or UK or other countries, it's been much less in Germany. So that might mean that the that the lockdown measures are eased more quickly. It might mean the recovery is better in Germany. We also know in Germany there's a very big fiscal stimulus mm -hmm. to support the economy, and that will, because of the integration that will spill over into Eastern Europe, and including Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, of course, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, that it's not the worst position to be in to have this integration with with Germany. Uh, as the recovery comes, you know, it's it's possible that would be a, a positive factor. Do you have um, 
already uh, any data uh, how big the recession in Bulgaria will be? In terms well, of we have yeah, yeah. economic so growth. We only have GDP for the for the first quarter, which tells uh -huh. us very little, you know, because really it was only the second half of March when mm -hmm. the full measures were implemented. So really what we will see is, is more the second quarter mm -hmm. GDP. That's where we really see the big main impact. Mm -hmm. And that we, we won't have for, for a couple of months. I mean, mm -hmm. we have data, you know, we have some of these very high frequency data, like this Google mobility data. Yeah. Um, this kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it shows you something, you know, it, it gives you an approximation. We also have some of the monthly data, like retail trade mm -hmm. data, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks very bad. You know, it, 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 it confirms, I think, the, the view which I said before that this will be the worst since the 90s. You know, this is, this is already, I think we can already say with a reasonable degree of confidence that this is worse than 2008 mm -hmm. in terms of the, the real GDP. Uh, you mean for system. Bulgaria or for the region now? Both. Both, okay. Yeah. Um, what role has the fact that we are out of the Eurozone? Good question. I mean, because Bulgaria is okay, it is out of the Eurozone, but in some ways it's, it's in it, the Eurozone. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have a floating exchange rate. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, We've seen, for example, that exchange rates in some of the central European countries like Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary depreciated a lot. I mm -hmm. think that will matter. I mean, that's not the case, obviously, for Bulgaria or for Croatia. I think that, um, of course, there are there are some very concrete advantages to being in the in the eurozone. You know, the the support for banks, um, mm -hmm. the the ability to issue debt, public debt in your own currency, that's mm -hmm. this huge market. Um, but I suspect it won't be the deciding factor. You know, I don't think it's really like a huge advantage mm -hmm. or a disadvantage. You know, if I compare Slovakia and the Czech Republic, which is, I think, a good way to compare Euro versus non-Euro. Because, because our prime minister said um, uh, that it would be a big um, advantage if we were uh, at least uh, not in the Eurozone, but at least at uh, the uh, ERME2. Uh, yeah. So we are now um, trying to enter uh, the ERM2. Uh, and uh, yeah, he said that it, would, yeah. it could be uh, a big advantage for us, but we are still not there. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be an advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, that, that's that's clear. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it would be the deciding factor. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look across Central and Eastern Europe, I don't think you can really argue that, the, you know, the, whether or not the countries in, in the Eurozone is the most important factor mm -hmm. in this crisis in terms of how badly countries would be affected. And how do you think, what are our chances to enter uh, the ERM2 uh, this year? It's, uh, it's difficult for me to say. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, you know, my opinion would be that both Bulgaria and Croatia are, are still on course for mm -hmm. the euro. I think, you know, that is where both countries are going. But, you know, I think... we. In terms of the timing, like many things, it, a lot of things are less sure now, less or, or more uncertain because of because of this crisis. Yeah. So I think it's still, you know, Bulgaria will join the, will join the euro, but I think it's very hard for anyone to be really sure in mm -hmm. this environment about uh, about timing, and that, that applies to Croatia the same. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, which sectors do you think will be hardest hit by the by this crisis? Yeah. I mean, I think this year it's, you know, anything which is, has been especially locked down or closed down mm -hmm. and which is harder to open. So that's mm -hmm. obviously in, for example, um, recreational leisure industry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, restaurants and, and cafes, but also maybe especially museums and cinemas. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure exactly in Bulgaria, but in Austria, those are the last things to open. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, 
things like cinemas and, and museums. So everything in that sector. I think um, external trade, you know, the, and ex- export industry, you know, mm-hmm. global global trade has collapsed. It also yeah. looks worse than 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, and and tourism, you know, tourism will be very badly affected this year. I think you know the, yeah. the tourism season this summer is going to be, in 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 Bulgaria and Southeast Europe in general, it's going to be yeah. very difficult, difficult tourism season. I think. I mean, a lot of that should come back. You know, I mean, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, but you know, the, the tourism sector, once this very acute phase of the crisis passes and people have confidence about, you know, that there isn't a second or a third wave, you know, that we all have to see about all of that. But I think once it passes, you know, the tourism sector can recover very strongly, very quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. I think also, you know, global trade, I think can also recover quite quickly. You know, it depends what happens in Asia. It depends what happens in Germany, like we already discussed. But I think also, also there, I think, but in the kind of leisure recreation industry in you know for a lot of small businesses in so restaurants and cafes and places that have had to close for a while you know these are often small businesses they maybe don't have resources to to ride this out like bigger companies would and i think that is definitely uh, a concern there are sectors though that will, will benefit from this mm-hmm. you know and and i think we see that already like uh, everything in the digital sphere any yeah. any businesses that can be done online they get a huge boost from this, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Um, when could we expect recovery? And maybe what would be the role of the EU Commission recovery plan? Yeah. So I think, the, you know, the recovery is possibly already here, you know, but we're recovering from an extremely low base. Yeah. I think that really the full recovery can only happen when life really returns to mm-hmm. something like normal and mm-hmm. that's when we either have full confidence among enough people that the virus is not coming mm-hmm. back you know that there won't be a second or a third wave mm-hmm. or we have a vaccine you know a vaccine that's available for everybody yeah and i think the, the estimates from the scientists i mean obviously i can't judge that but the estimates from the scientists are that that will be really second half of next year yeah it's kind of a likely time frame for the for vaccine so i think you know we might be in this sort of up and down phase where we slowly recover but there's a lot of caution still you know this can last a year easily um and you know with a recovery but not a very strong but very impressive uh, Mm -hmm. recovery so yeah that could be my next question how the recovery will look like yeah, so I think it will be it will not be V shaped, definitely. Yeah. Um I mean I like this idea of this Nike tick recovery that somebody uh, came up with. You know the, the you know what I mean, the Nike uh, sports brand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a V in a way, but the mm-hmm. the right hand side of the V is quite <laughs> gradual and I think this is this is like the, the most likely scenario I would say. Mm-hmm. Um I think you know unless there's unless the virus really comes back, there's a huge second wave. Mm-hmm. I think we're past the worst. You know, we had we had the low point, mm-hmm. but there is just this huge caution which you see. You know, out on the streets, you feel it that people are very cautious. Yeah. People are not returning completely to normal life, and I think they won't for for some time. Yeah. And what would be the role of the EU <clears throat> Commission recovery plan in in I mean, this sense? I mean, we have to see what's 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 exactly? in the end, and obviously it's interesting to discuss this from Austria because mm-hmm. Austria is one of the countries that is at the moment against it. Yeah. I mean, I think it matters. It's always matters though in the EU if you have France and Germany on the same side. I mean, mm-hmm. for that reason, I would be quite optimistic mm-hmm. that it will happen in something like you know the, in, the plans, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. And in that case, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of money. You know, the projections are up to 20% of GDP for some of the Eastern European mm-hmm. countries. I cannot remember exactly. I think Bulgaria is towards the top, uh, you know, mm-hmm. has one of the biggest potential allocations relative to GDP, I think. And so it, it, if it happens in something like the form which it is planned, then I think it would be actually pretty significant. You know, it's, it's quite a bit of extra money on top of the existing EU budget mm-hmm. um, as a share of GDP. 
it's two, you know, the way it's planned is two thirds of it is grants, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be paid back. Yeah. Um, and you know, Bulgaria looks like will be one of the countries that benefits most from it. So, I think it's in a way kind of surprising development. It reflects a different kind of thinking in Germany about this whole issue. Mm -hmm. It reflects, I think, also the severity of the crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really focused the minds, and it will be in a, if it happens in anything like the way it is planned. And as I said, I'm reasonably optimistic. Um, I think it would be an important part of the recovery. Okay. Uh, Bulgaria cut the VAT value-added tax uh, for restaurants from 20 to 9 percent today, and many economists uh, in our country criticized the decision, saying it would open the door for many more industries to seek um, tax cuts. What mm. signal could this change in our tax system uh, send to potential foreign investors? Because VAT is the main revenue source for our country. Mm. I mean, I think, I mean, as, as a result of, you know, at the moment, the, the onus is on governments to, uh, Ease fiscal policy, you know, whether that's uh, to, to spend more or cut taxes mm -hmm. to, to stimulate the economy. Um, I think that most governments are, are going in that direction. You know, Bulgaria is not a, an unusual case. Mm -hmm. And that's the right thing to do. I think, you know, to, 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 I, I don't have a strong opinion on, on a VAT cut in Bulgaria specifically. Yeah. But I think in general, the, mm -hmm. the fiscal loosening is, is important because the government has to step in to, to support the economy in such a, such a particular and, and, and bad crisis. But um, because we rely um, that um, our income and corporate uh, tax is at 10%, and yeah. it's the lowest in the European Union, and we rely on that to attract foreign mm. investors. So when we have the VAT uh, cut, so uh, as the main revenue source, uh, that's why I am asking you. Yeah, so, I mean, so you mean what signal does it send to foreign yes, investors? That yes, you, I don't, I don't because know. Maybe. I thought you were asking more about public debt and about foreign investors in that sense. Uh-huh. About a higher fiscal deficit and more public debt, and if if uh -huh. you know, bond investors would worry, but that's not what you mean. Yeah, more um, because um, if the VAT is cut like this, and in other industries also, uh, this may be um, would result uh, in um, the uh, the other taxes like income and corporate taxes. Uh, to be uh, increased. Uh, to rise. Okay, I understand. Yeah, and that's why. Maybe yeah, I mean. Thing. But yeah. Um, okay, I think that you know at the moment, you know the, the foreign investors probably have even bigger things to worry about. You know, I think that <laughs> okay. it's it's a time when there there won't be much foreign investment of of any mm. kind. Uh, you know, at yes. the I mean, I think that we all you know have to work on the assumption that. You know, the, we're going to see very big fiscal deficits for at least a year, probably two years or more in, in, in almost all European countries, including Central and Eastern Europe. Public debt is going to rise a lot as a result mm -hmm. of this crisis. So I mean, my assumption would be on aggregate, taxes are going to rise everywhere, you know, to, mm -hmm. to pay back this debt. You know, ta taxes will rise uh, across Central and Eastern Europe over the next few years, even if there are cuts now, I think that. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, this is an almost inevitable given that public debt is going to rise a lot. I mean, the advantage Bulgaria has is that it starts this crisis, and I think this was also in the Economist article actually that you know Bulgaria starts this crisis with very low public debt. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it is fiscally, you know, I always it's interesting to compare it to Romania. Mm -hmm. It's very different, you know, that Romania is seen as a you know it runs big fiscal deficits. It's kind of seen as a, almost reckless in a way, whereas Bulgaria has this reputation for being very careful, and mm -hmm. very fiscally conservative, and that's tied obviously to the Euro accession plans and, and the currency regime that Bulgaria has. And so I think the, 
you know, Bulgaria doesn't look like a country that is really in danger in a sense. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's my impression. But um, yeah, okay. uh, sorry, I don't know if that answers. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, how the region and Bulgaria could benefit from the near shoring? Uh, we have uh, big outsourcing, IT and automotive industries. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this will go further, basically. You know, I think that if you look at it from perspective of a German investor or an Austrian investor uh, with with investments outside of Europe, the, it looks different now. The calculation yeah. is different. It looks more risky. Um, the, the advantages of proximity are, are much greater. On the other hand, for them to really bring investment back home, you know, the labor costs are very high. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is an, uh, this is a... It's quite easy to make the argument that Central Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, can benefit from this. You know that the the advantages of investing in in Central Eastern Europe will be higher than they were before the crisis. Now, I think the question is, is that like an incremental change? You know, does it just happen a bit, or does it happen a lot? And I mm -hmm. think that will really depend on on the country. You know, I, I think that different countries have different advantages and where. I would see, you know, in, in manufacturing, in automotive sector, mm -hmm. I think that still, you know, the Visegrad countries really have the advantage here. You know, I think they will maybe benefit more from that. I think where maybe countries further east or further south, like Bulgaria, maybe the real advantages are more, like you say, in the IT sector mm -hmm. or in digital economy in general or in the services sector, I think. Yeah, this is a sector that will, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a sector that will really get a boost from this crisis. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's shown how much more can be done remotely, you know, than than before. Mm -hmm. Because in general, you know, in Germany, in general, outsourcing of production, you know, the manufacturing has gone much further than outsourcing of services so far. And mm -hmm. that's something mm -hmm. that might change as a result of this crisis. Uh -huh. There might be more outsourcing of services functions to mm -hmm. countries like Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. And in general, you know, the digital economy, the IT sector, and you know, and like you say, I mean, there's already a hub in Sofia. It's already started in Bulgaria, but this sector has got a boost, you know, in a few weeks, basically, that mm -hmm. could have taken otherwise five or 10 years you yeah. know, as a result of this crisis. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is something that will, you know, that is a permanent change, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something that I think you know, because we know that Central Eastern Europe has good people, qualified people who can work in these sectors. We know that there are already hubs, including in Bulgaria. You know, there's already an established mm -hmm. competence in this area. And that's something I think could go much further as a result of this crisis. Um, what are the main lessons that we in Europe should learn in the result of this crisis? And oh. is the globalization mm -hmm. over? Um, yeah. As yeah, we were talking about nearshoring. So I think globalization has certainly peaked. You know, I think that um, you know, we, we, I mean, we already had the reality of great power conflicts between China and the mm -hmm. US. That you know that that already existed. Yeah. There was already this huge threat to globalization, and I think you know the, the combination of this crisis with the fact that you know it originated in China. Mm -hmm. that so much of the production of, for example, medicines is in China. I mean, I think this all goes together in the same direction. That we will see uh, a rolling back of globalization. I don't think it's the end of globalization at all, mm -hmm. but I think at least in some sectors, we're going to see unwinding of you know these very complex supply chains. Uh, I mm -hmm. think that's reasonably likely. And maybe what we will see more is three relatively distinct blocks in the global economy of, of the US, the EU and, and China. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think there's still scope, especially maybe between the EU and China, there's still scope for, for areas of cooperation. But I think the, the you know, what is called the hyper-globalization period, I think, has passed. You know, the peak, mm -hmm. the peak period of that has passed. And, uh, we will see more protectionist world now, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay.